Hello, every day people are exposed to n number of factors in the environment or the surroundings around them. But their brain focuses to pay attention only on those factors that matters them the most. In this module, we will look at the concept of attention. At the end of the module, the learner will be able to define attention, explain the various concepts which are related to attention, give the examples for the different types of attention, differentiate between the types of attentions and also list the educational implications of the concept of attention. Let us understand the meaning of attention. Attention is the ability to focus and maintain interest in a given task including managing the distractions at the same time. While watching this video, you are exercising attention. In the words of Dumbwell, attention is the concentration of consciousness upon one object rather than upon another. So one is consciously putting efforts to concentrate on one object in this case. Let us look at the various concepts which are related to attention. Few of them, span of attention, fluctuation of attention, division of attention and distraction of attention. Let us look at each one of them in detail. Span of attention is the amount of concentrated time one can spend on task without becoming distracted. Have you ever looked at today's children? Nowadays, it is often seen that while completing their homework, children are also simultaneously paying attention or have you ever observed how much time children today spend on the smartphones? How much time they spend on internet? How much time they spend on checking messages on WhatsApp and Facebook? All these work simultaneously goes along with doing the homework. Parents complain that their children are not able to pay attention to the homework or the studies they are doing. Is it related to span of attention? Nowadays, it has been observed that the attention span have decreased dramatically. There are various ways to improve the attention span by making little changes in our lifestyle and few exercises. We can help children to get a better span of attention. If a person is able to concentrate on what he is doing for a longer period of time, then that person's span of attention is very high. Whereas, if a person is not able to pay attention to what he is doing for a long time, then it is said that his span of attention is very less. We move to the second concept of attention, which is called as fluctuation of attention. When we are seeing an object or listening to a sound, after few seconds, the attention will be shifted towards other stimulus or other area of stimulus for a fraction of time and return to the original stimulus. This process is called as fluctuation. Attention may rise and fall like a wave and it can be termed as fluctuation of attention. In the course of time, the center of our consciousness shifts from one stimuli to another stimuli or one object to another object, one part of the same stimuli to the another part of the same stimuli, paying attention or not paying attention to. Let us look at few examples. Geeta is listening to the lecture on psychology. She suddenly remembers that she has forgotten to bring her textbook for the next lecture. She decides to share her benchmate's book. Her attention is shifted and then she starts listening to her psychology teacher again. You are browsing Facebook on your mobile when you suddenly notice that you have three new mails. Your attention is shifted and now you are checking those three mails. Once that has been done, you get back to browsing Facebook. The third concept is division of attention. It can be defined as ability to respond simultaneously to multiple task demands. In other words, divided attention concerns our ability to multitask, whether we can attend to more than one task at a time. Examples of division of attention can be 
a tailor will be stitching the clothes and also speaking to his customers at the same time, talking on phone while at the same time surfing the web. Distraction of attention. Distraction is the diverting of attention of an individual or a group from one chosen object of attention on to the source of distraction. For example, while reading a book, we are concentrating on that particular book contents of the book. At the same time, we listen an attractive music from somewhere. Our attention is shifted from the book to the music. Although physically we are attending or reading a book, but our focus or attention is towards the music, not towards the content of the book. Students are much affected by distraction. Hence, they should have learned to concentrate mind on studies. There can be many reasons for the distraction of attention. One of them can be lack of ability to pay attention, lack of interest in the object of attention, the greater intensity or attractiveness as if the interesting music, something other than the object of attention. The distraction of attention can be divided into two parts, internal distraction and external distraction. The examples of the internal distraction can be emotional disturbances. A child or a person may be going through some kind of a stress or any other disturbance. Child may not be feeling well, suffering from fever or anything else. Child is feeling bored or a person is not motivated to attend to the particular object, fatigue, etc. Also, there are factors which are uncontrollable called as external distraction. Few of the examples can be noise, external noise. A child is studying in a classroom. There is a function going outside the classroom and the noise, because of that noise, the child is not able to concentrate or pay attention to the teacher. Improper or insufficient lightning in a room. Uncomfortable sitting arrangement. Uncomfortable weather also can lead to distraction. Now let us move to the various types of attention. It can be categorized into sustained attention, selective attention, alternative attention and divided attention. Let us look at each one of them in detail. Sustained attention. It is the ability to keep focus or concentration for long periods of time, even if the individual is exposed to repetitive action or activity. It is pretty simple to catch anybody's attention, but it is most challenging task to sustain the attention for a considerable amount of time. Few of the examples where we require sustained attention is listening to a teacher lecture the whole hour or 40 minutes, answering test in an exam or exercising the questions, completing an extensive project as a part of an activity. After sustained attention, let us have a look at the another type of attention called as selective attention. Selective attention is the ability to select from many factors or stimuli and focus on only the one that you prefer or your brain selects. Have you ever been to a loud concert or a crowded restaurant? It is very difficult to listen to the person who is with you in that particular situation. While it is very difficult to pick up each and every word, but still we pick up most of the conversation. This is because we choose to attend to that particular person's voice as opposed to the person who are speaking around you. We block out certain features in the environment and attend only to the feature that we want to attend to. Examples of selective attention can be being able to focus on a friend's voice in a loud and crowded room or visiting a busy exhibition and attending to a particular demonstration which we would like to attend to. It is impossible to give attention to all stimuli in the environment. This occurs on daily basis. Consciously or unconsciously, we pay attention to the things that appeal to our senses 
and ignore the irrelevant information. For example, when we are hungry, we will pay more attention to a burger rather than a sound of phone ringing. Alternating attention. As the name suggests, it is the ability to switch or immediately transfer your focus or concentration from one activity to another. Every day you have to make sudden changes in the activities or actions sometimes, which also requires your attention to shift. The examples of alternating attention can be, a boss scolds her office staff for a major mistake over a phone call and immediately attends to a staff and greets him for his birthday. Another example can be, the university teacher is engrossed in checking assignments, alternatively attending to a call regarding sample issue of a research student and suggest a solution. Divided attention. Have you ever done two things at once? Divided attention is the ability of an individual to focus or concentrate on two or more environmental factors, stimuli or activities simultaneously. In its simplest form, experts call it as an ability to multitask. Examples of divided attention can be person checking email while listening to the discussion of a meeting also, talking with the guest while preparing a meal for the them, talking with guests also while preparing a meal for them. Let us look at the educational implications of attention. Some ways by which we can hold and sustain attention in students. One of them can be add an attention gaining strategy. Whenever we begin our lecture or any class, one must use strategies by which we can gain attention of the students so that during the whole teaching learning process they can be with the teacher and paying attention to the content covered in the class, pay attention to the content and discussion in the classroom. Attention can also be sustained by including a motivational factor, rewards, reinforcement, all these factors motivate students to pay attention better in the classroom. The knowledge of the learner's performance requirement also helps in holding the attention for a longer period of a time. Arranging the structure of a content in a way also helps to students to concentrate better. Instead of more of a textual, use of a concept maps, mind maps, all these graphics helps students to include multiple intelligences and thus will be able to focus or pay or concentrate better on the content. Strategies such as experiential learning or active learning methods where learners are actively involved in the process of learning helps students to pay or concentrate more on a particular content thus by increasing their attention. Another way to hold and sustain attention is to reduce the distractors internal as well as external distractors in the environment, which in turn will help students to concentrate better. To conclude, attention is very very important factor that affects learning. Attention is the concentration of consciousness upon one object rather than upon another. We have seen the various concepts related to attention such as sustained attention, selective attention, alternating attention and divided attention. We also looked at the educational implications of the concept of attention. We have seen the various ways by which we can hold and help students attain attention in such student. We have also seen the various ways by which we can help students to hold and sustain attention so that they can learn effectively and perform better in any situations. Thank you.